Let's look at some more compound inequalities. Here we have x is greater than 5 and x is less than 12. Remember that the word and corresponds to intersection. Intersection is where things overlap, where they intersect, where they cross, what they have in common. So what we can do here is we draw this number line. Pay attention to the order. 5 and then 12. Now I'm not going to do anything on this number line just yet, so don't draw anything on here. Instead, I want you to kind of lightly graph above this um, what each of these guys are. X is greater than 5 is an open circle at 5 and going all the way out to the right. X is less than 12 is an open circle at 12 going all the way out to the left. Now if I want the intersection, I need to find out where do these guys overlap, where do they intersect. And they intersect right here in between 5 and 12. So if I were to put that on my number line, on my answer, it's everything in between there. But am I including 5? Well, to be an intersection, it has to be true for both. 5 is not included here. And so even though it's included here, it's included here, but it's not there. It doesn't satisfy both of those, so it stays open here. Same thing here for the 12. It's included here, but not on the other guy. So since it is not included for both, it is not included in our solution set. So we take this guy and go into interval notation. We would simply write from 5 to 12 parentheses on both ends because we're not including the 5 or the 12. Well, let's try this guy. Suppose I have x is greater than or equal to 10 or negative 3x is greater than 9. Well, the word or means something different than the word and. When I see the word or, I'm talking about the word union. And union means combining, putting together, and just joining everything together that you have. Now, before I can do this, though, I've got to take care of this guy. See, x is greater than or equal to 10 is fine. He's solved for x, but this guy's not. So if I just quickly divide both sides by negative 3, I get that x is, watch out here, this is less than negative 3. So when I see the word union, union means put everything together. So I've got two numbers that I care about, 10 and negative 3. Keep in mind the order is important. So negative 3 is on the left and 10 is on the right. Now, since the union says put everything together, I don't have to have two separate graphs like I have up here where I was finding where do they intersect. I'm just going to put everything on here and see what I have. Greater than or equal to 10 means I have a closed circle at 10 and greater than is out to the right. Less than negative 3 means an open circle at negative 3 and going out to the left. Now do these guys intersect? No. The answer is definitely they, no, these guys do not intersect. But I'm not looking for where they intersect. I just want to put everything together. That's so what, what the word union means. So if I describe this piece right here using interval notation, I get from negative infinity to negative 3. Over here, this guy is from 10 to infinity. The only place I have a closed circle is the 10, and that's the only place I have a bracket. But there's something that joins these guys together, and that's the union symbol right here. Okay. This is our union symbol. Make sure you understand it's a symbol and it's not it's not the letter U. You put a tail on it, I've got to cut that off and I've got to charge a couple of points. So you definitely don't want to do that. So intersection and, and union are a lot like when you see prerequisites for a class. If a class says that 
a prerequisite would be, you know, this class and another class. Well, that means you have to have taken both of those guys. But if it said or, it just has to be one or the other. And when I look here, my solutions, my x has to satisfy being greater than or equal to 10 or less than negative 3. You're not going to find a number that satisfies both of these, but just one of them. And as long as you satisfy one of them, then that's part of your solution set. So I've got these two intervals right here. Since these guys both represent my solution, but they're disconnected, I use this union symbol to join those guys together. Now, you can actually graph these guys on your graphing calculator. Now, to do that, you have to make sure you know where, how to use the logic part of your calculator. Okay. I guess I'll just do this. This looks good. Sorry about that. If you go to second test, you have inequalities, and under logic you have and and or. Now here's the thing about logic. Logic will return zero if it's false and one if it's true. So if I graph x is greater than or equal to 10, and I go to or, and I type in negative 3x, go back to your test to do greater than 9. Here's what your graph looks like. Now you can't really see all of this because the scale is kind of weird. All this horizontal line right here where y is equal to 1, that's telling me where it's true. Where you don't see that is telling me where it's false. So in terms of logic and computers, 1 is true, 0 is false. Now I'm going to change my window real quick. Let's make my, since my x is going to greater than or equal to 10, let's change that x max to be 20. Y min, well, let's make that zero. Let's make the y max too, since we're talking about logic and we're only, we know that we're, our y values will be just zero and one, let's do this. Now let's go back to graph. So you see here, this is where x is less than negative three. That's what happened from this first inequality right here. And as it keeps graphing, see it's starting to graph that x is greater than or equal to 10. So you have two different pieces right here. Now, let's go check the first inequality that we had. If I want to graph this guy, x, go to your second math to your test. x is greater than 5. To do your logic for the and, go back to your test and go over to logic x is less than 12, so second math, less than 12. Now, according to what we have here, it should give me this section between 5 and 12. That's what I'm saying is my solution. So on a graph that you see, here's this piece between 5 and 12. That totally matches up with what I had graphed here in my number line. Now, it won't show you the endpoints as being open or closed, so you're going to have to be able to determine that from the inequality symbols used.